welcome to the Ecamm channel. This is Xu Hang. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you two advanced analyze methods to understand the charging mechanism of the electro materials based on the cyclic voltammetry. Here I'm showing two CV curves. Each has a pair of peaks on the anodic and cathodic branch. From our tutorial one, we can tell the upper curve is more close to a battery type and the bottom one is more close to a pseudocapacitive type. But you may ask, are there any more quantitative way to understand the charge storage mechanism? The answer is yes. We can calculate the B value. Researchers find that the peak current IP is in proportional to the square roots of scan rate for a total reversible diffusion limited process. So we can write an equation, the peak current IP equals to a V to the power of B, whereas V means the scan rate. In this equation, B equal to 0 0.5 means diffusion limited process and B equal to 1 means capacitive process. If we do log to both sides of the equation, then we can write log IP equal to log A plus B log V. When we plot log IP as a function of log V, the slope of the curve is the B value. In this way, it is very clear whether the process is capacitive or diffusion controlled. How can we obtain the V value from experiment is given here. Step one, obtain the CV curve at different scan rate. Read the peak current at different scan rates. Step two, plot log of the peak current as a function of the log of the scan rate. Step three, Linear feed the scattered points. The slope of the curve is the B value. If B equal to 1, it means capacitive. B equal to 0 0.5 means it is diffusion controlled. Usually, we will find that the B value is in between 0 0.5 and 1. It means a combined mechanism between capacitive and diffusion controlled process. Although these methods have been widely used to find the charge storage mechanism, a plot like this usually only gives a straight line in a very small scan rate range. When increasing the scan rate, the slope of the curve will be smaller and smaller. That is because the scan rate will catch up and finally be larger than the diffusion rate. Even for a supercapacitor, for example, hundreds volt per second, the B value will not be 1 anymore. So in order to obtain the B value, we always feed the points of relatively smaller scan rates. Then you may ask further, can we be more quantitative? Here from the B value, we can only know it is a combined mechanism. Are we able to obtain how much each of mechanism contributes to the overall capacitance? For a combined process, it can be assumed that the total current response at a particular potential, IV, is the sum of the current associated with capacitive process and diffusion limited process. We can simplify the process by adding the contribution from capacitive and diffusion control together and write this as IV equal to K1V plus K2V to the power of 0 0.5. While the capacitive current is proportional to V and diffusion limited current is in proportional to V to the square of 0 0.5. Dividing V to 0 0.5 to both sides, we obtain this new equation. If we plot IV over V to the power of 0 0.5 as a function of V to 0 0.5, a linear curve can be obtained. In this linear curve, the slope is K1 and the intercept with Y is K2. So the contribution from capacitive and diffusion limited charge storage mechanism can be obtained by knowing K1, K2 for a specific scan rate and specific potential. For a specific CV curve, the value of K1 and K2 is different at different potential on the cathodic and anodic branch. So if we would like to obtain the contribution of each mechanism for a complete CV curve, we have to get as many value of K1 and K2 as we can at different potential on both cathodic and anodic branch. Similar to the B value calculation, 
K1 and K2 value can be very different for different ranges of scan rate. So we have to use a small range of scan rate to obtain the K1 and K2. For example, if we are interested to know the contribution of the capacitance and diffusion controlled process at a scan rate of 10 mV per second, it is better to use, for example, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 mV per second, or even 9, 9.5, 10, 10.5, and 11 mV per second, based on accuracy of the potential stat we are using. Holiday season is coming next week. John and I are here to wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. We now update the channel twice a month on Sunday. The videos in our eCam channel are completely free and only for educational purposes and knowledge distribution. It will certainly motivate us if you subscribe and like our videos. If you have any questions and suggestions, just leave us some comments. Thank you for watching the video today. See you in 2021.